guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril Paints and today we are going to be taking a trip into Cand and the brave charioteers that ride to battle from there and we're going to be painting up some warriors of Cand today. Some really lovely sculpts on these models, they're really fun to paint up, they've got a lot of cloth, a lot of texture detail on them and some really good opportunity for freehand on the banners which we have explored in this video for you as well. Uh, we're going to be using quite a muted colour palette and quite a lot of the Candish warriors you see painted up uh, sport predominantly black robes and we've taken a slightly different approach and gone for a bit of a pastely muted purple which really complements well with the golds and the reds on the model so really hope that uh, you enjoy the finished result here. Uh, as always we cleaned and prepped our model, we got rid of any of the mould lines and trimmed the model off of any of the flash uh, as they're predominantly metal models there will be a fair bit of this so just take your time and go around and make sure you get as much of this as you can. Uh, we didn't have our flag at this point because uh, it went a walkabout a little bit but when you've got your one clean and primed Assemble the flag to the back of the Candish Warrior with the little peg that's there. We're just using some super glue, and then we affixed our model to the base using super glue as well. We put a little kink in the uh, in the fixation rod just to make sure it's set in there nice and comfortably. And once that was dry, we covered the base with uh, fine modelling sand, and then once again, once that was dry, the model was primed with Chaos Black undercoat. We really hope you enjoy this tutorial. Uh, please drop a like, drop a subscribe, every little bit helps. Uh, we are trying desperately to get back to some kind of regular release schedule. Uh, it's all gone a bit crazy here at the moment. Uh, but we are going to get back there and we have plenty in the bank ready for you in the run up to Christmas. But until then, please sit back, relax and enjoy the video. First we're going to use Citadel Bugman's Glow and we're going to apply a nice smooth base coat to the face and the hands that are gripping the shaft of the axe. Now we're using a combination of scale colour violet and scale colour black and we're going to apply this in a few thin coats over the main bulk of his outer robes. Now we opted for the scale colour variant of these colours for this particular bit on the model, but you can achieve exactly the same effect with a mix of Phoenix and Purple and Abaddon Black from the Games Workshop Citadel range. We just like the coverage that the purple gives us from this particular paint range. A couple of nice thin coats, waiting for the previous layer to dry before you apply again for a nice smooth crisp finish. Now we're going to use a mix of Corn Red and Rhinox Hide and we'll apply a base coat to the flag on both sides. The chest armour peeking out from underneath his outer robes, the small bits of cloth on the very inside of his legs and then just the interior of the main helmet bulk working its way around the gold interlacing as well as the red headdress falling down the back of his neck. Again particularly with areas large and flat like the flag, wait for the previous coat to dry and apply this in a couple of thin down coats to get a smooth even finish. Now we're going to use a mix of Skaven Black Dinge and Abaddon Black and just very carefully paint the remaining robes hanging down by his legs as well as any arm sleeves poking out under the main robes. Now we're going to use Doom Ball Brown mixed with a little bit of Abaddon Black, not too much so it becomes too dark, just to give it a nice leathery beaten texture and just base coat his boots. Now we're going to use Lead Belcher and just very carefully paint the main bulk of the axe shaft making sure we get all around the circumference as well as the axe head. And any of the exposed poles holding the flag in place as well as the pommel on the top of the flag. Now we're going to use a mix of Bugman's Glow with a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone and we're going to apply an all over layer once again to the face and the hands, making sure we get in all the nooks and crannies around the eyes, around the mustache and lips and in all the grooves of the fingers at this stage. Now we're going to apply a wash with Reitman Flesh Shade, thin down with some Lamia Medium and just apply this as a wash all over the exposed areas of skin. This will just sink into the recesses and provide a nice little bit of base depth.
Once the wash is dry, we're going to re-layer over, adding a bit more Hadean flesh tone to the original Bugman's Glow Mix. And now we're just going to layer over all these areas again, but making sure we leave the right clean flesh shade showing in the recesses, particularly between the fingers, around the eyes and the nose, just to start creating that depth and features in the face. Now we can apply another layer using pure Cadian Flesh Tone and just further push the previous layers, keeping our highlights slightly more controlled, slightly thinner, just to really help further define his facial features. As a rank and file warrior with not a lot of face showing underneath his helmet and beard, it's quite hard to get these facial features to shine through. Spend a bit of time here and the effect will really shine through once we're done. Now we're going to use a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone mixed with a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh and just apply this as a first initial highlight, once again, further pushing the highlights of the previous layers, further and further, which is more controlled, much thinner brush strokes, separating out the tendons in the back of his hand, as well as defining the fingers up to the knuckle joints and accentuating features on his face like the bridge of his nose and his eyes and cheekbones. For the final highlight, we're just gonna add a little bit more pallid witch flesh, which will bring your mix up to an approximate 50-50 split between this and the Cadian flesh tone, and just apply this as dot highlights to the most pronounced areas of skin, particularly the fingertips, knuckles, nose bridge and edges of the cheekbones. Now we're going to use Abaddon Black and very carefully paint two horizontal lines in the recesses of his eyes which will create the basis for the pupils in a second. At this stage as well you can also go around the beard once again with the Abaddon Black very carefully just to block out his beard once again if you have bled over with the flesh. Now using Corax White put two very small dots either side of each horizontal line to fill in the pupils. Now we're going to use pure scope and black dinge and we're just going to very carefully just fill in his beard and moustache down the bottom of his face, being very careful not to bleed over onto the finished flesh. Finally, using storm vermin fur, we're just going to apply a few vertical highlights just to create a bit of depth and definition and accentuate the hairs across his beard and moustache. Now onto the tunic. We're going to be adding more violet in various stages to the original violet and black mix and apply an all over layer initially to the entire outer tunic. Once again, in a couple of thin coats, just to keep it as crisp and clean, as smooth as we can. Again, as we said, you can use the Games Workshop variants, which are Phoenix and Purple and Abaddon Black, and you will get very much the same result. Now, a lot of the candies are shown to have uh, black robes with grey highlights, but we wanted our fellow here to have a little bit more colour in his palette and a little bit more impact on the battlefield when placed there. So we went for a slightly more purple hue, which we'll be highlighting up with some muted greys later on. Once your layers are in place, we're going to apply a, a targeted wash now with a heavily diluted mix of the original violet and black mix. But you want to make sure that your violet concentration in this is very low because you want to really create some depth and definition in the cloth. We're just going to apply this again, as I said, as a targeted shade, focusing on the main recesses and deepest areas of recessed cloth all over the model. Don't worry about being overly neat here because the next layer we can fix any mistakes that we do bleed over onto. Now we're going to start adding scale colour rainy grey to the previous violet and black layering mix and just start separating out some of the bulkier areas of cloth making sure we leave the targeted shade showing in the absolute deepest recesses where the material will be bunching up more. If you are using the Citadel range of paints for this stage, you can substitute the Rainy Grey with Dawnstone and it will bring up the paint to the same hue as the scale colour variants do here. We're using the grey because we don't want the cloth to look overly garish and overly bright and the Rainy Grey or Dawnstone will really help to bring up these textures in a nice muted, almost pastely way which will really benefit the model's overall look once we finish with the cloth. Once you're happy with the initial layering stages, we're going to start adding scale colour miskatonic grey to the violet, black and grey mixture. Again, if you're using Citadel paints, you can substitute this with administratum grey. It's very much the same hue and we'll do exactly the same job here. With this, we're going to apply our first initial highlight, once again just accentuating the outer folds of material, 
leaving the layer and the shade showing in the deepest recesses and creating a nice sense of transition between the darker and lighter areas of cloth. Now we opted for a couple of highlights with this, increasing the amount of miscatonic every time we did. By the time you've finished the series of highlights, your mix should contain no more than 50% miscatonic grey or administratum grey to the original violet grey and rainy grey mix. And by the time we finished our last highlights with this mix, this is what our Candice Warrior looked like. Now, for the very final highlight, we're going to add some scale colour white to the overall mix. No more than about a quarter of the mix should contain this white because we do not want to suddenly bring the contrast up too starkly, too vibrantly and really undo all the effect of the natural looking cloth we've created so far. Uh, white scale would work for this as well if you're going down the Citadel variant of paints. And we're just going to apply this as a very, very fine highlight just on the absolute crest of material where it bunches up and the light will be hitting the most prominently on the upper areas of cloth and edges of material. Try and keep your brush strokes as thin and tight as you possibly can in nice long unbroken streaks to really finish off the highlights for the cloth. Now onto the red. We're going to start adding Wasdaka Red to the original Corn Red Rhinox High base mix and we're just going to layer over all the red armour and the flag with this mix. We want to try and separate out the banner pole to the main body of the flag at this stage as this is one of the deepest recesses in these areas but just apply a nice move base to the flag as well as highlighting the cloth in between the legs, the back of the head, the inner workings of the helmet area and layering over all the armour on the chest plate. Now we're going to 50-50 mix of Corn Red and Rhinox Hide, thin down with a little bit of Lamia Medium and apply this as a targeted shade all over these red areas. Here we want to focus on separating out the bits of cloth and the very distinct fold in the back of the headdress down the back of his head, as well as segmenting out all the armour plating just to create a little bit of definition between these segments. With the banner we want to draw a nice thin line in the groove where the banner pole meets the main body of the flag, as well as trying to create some definition across the flag itself. Now we're going to use a wash of Caraba Crimson and Agrax Earth Shade thinned down significantly with Lamia Medium and we're just going to further push this shade by applying this as an all over wash all over the red. This will just help accentuate the recessed shade we've just applied and give a really nice rich tone to the reds once it's dried. Now the main characteristic of these Candish, in my opinion, is their very bright vibrant reds in contrast to their quite muted and dark toned cloth that they sport. So we want to start bringing this up to a really nice vibrant hue at an early stage. So we're going to layer over now once both the shade and the wash have dried with pure Wasdaka red, being very careful now to leave all the recesses still showing the shade and the wash layers underneath. Again with the flag, as it's quite a flat large area you want to apply this in a few thin coats to get a smooth finish. We want to focus on defining the armour a little bit more now by focusing this layer on the upper areas of the segmentation of the armour plating as well as working our way towards the interior of the helmet leaving the wash showing in the grooves where it would meet the gold. Now we're going to start adding Evil Sun Scarlet to the Wasdaka mix, about a 50-50 mix and we're going to highlight all these areas once again, just keeping our highlights nice and tight, nice and thin, and working our way towards all the edges of all this material. Again, starting to focus on the edges of all the armour plating, just to create that sense of light hitting across metal, as well as defining the headdress by pushing this more towards the very edge and the upper crest, leaving that fold still showing the recess shade, and framing the inner workings of the helmet. With the banner pole, we want to create a sense of tension as the flag is being pulled away from the warrior in the wind. So we've added some horizontal lines working their way down the entire length of the banner pole just to show where this material might be stretching as this flag billows. 
and I want to focus on highlighting some of the raised areas on the flag, again just to further frame the shades we applied earlier, as well as create a nice sense of movement. For the final highlight we're going to add some Fire Dragon Bright to the previous Wazdaka Evil Suns mix and just apply this as a very fine edge highlight across all the reds. The very upper areas of the armour plating, the very tips and edges of all the material and the upper and lower crest of the headdress when the material bunches and meets the light more and then just framing the helmet that little bit more by focusing on the outer round areas. With the stretch marks in the banner pole we can focus now on just putting this as a little dot highlight just in the centre of these highlights all the way down the banner pole, pushing the highlights on the flag a little bit further to finalise that sense of movement across the entire flag. And then you should end up with a really nice rich looking red which complements well with the muted purple we've used for the cloth. Now we're going to lay it over the inner cloth using pure Skaven Blight Dinge, being careful to leave some of the previous base coat showing in the very very deepest recesses which we're going to shade in just a moment. Now using a mix of Abaddon Black thinned down with some Lamia Medium we can apply manual shade to these deepest recesses we left from the previous stage just to further push the shading and depth through these areas of material. Now we're going to use a mix of Skaven Black Dinge and Dawnstone and as we did with the outer cloth we're just going to focus on layering this over some of the most prominent folds of material over the lower cloth. Finally, we're going to use pure Dawnstone now, and we're just going to apply a very edge highlight just to the most prominent folds of material down the lower half of this cloth. This will create a nice transition between the black and the light areas of cloth, which tie in nicely with the muted colours we've used for the cloth and the vibrancy of the red. Now we're going to use Rakal Flesh and we're going to very very carefully base coat the sash around the Candice Warriors midsection with a few nice thin coats to get a nice smooth finish, being very careful here to not bleed over onto the finished tunic. Using a mix of Rakal Flesh and Pallid Witch Flesh now, we're going to layer over this nice and smoothly, nice and carefully in preparation for the following wash stage. Now we're going to apply a very thin down wash with Agrax Thurve Shade thinned down quite significantly with Lamia Medium and apply this as a wash just to shade the sash. Once the wash is dry we're going to relay with the Rakhard Flesh Pallid Witch Flesh mix and just leave the Agrax Thurve Shade showing in some of the more prominent recesses of material and just highlight the upper and lower areas of sash as well as the areas where the material bunch is hanging down his front. Now using pure pallid witch flesh I'm just going to apply a very fine edge highlight just to the upper areas of the sash material, separating out some of the folds which make up the sash round the back of the warrior and just finishing off the effect. We're going to add some scrag brown to the previous Doomball Brown Abaddon Black base we used for the base coat of the boots. We're just going to apply this as an all over layer just to give these boots a really leathery warm look.
as we did with the sash, we're going to apply the same wash with Agra Observe shade thinned down significantly with Lamia Medium and apply this all over the boots, which will just sink into the recesses and really give them that beaten, worn look. Now we're going to relayer now, adding a little bit more scrag brown to the previous Doomball Abaddon mix. And we're going to highlight over all the boots now, leaving the wash showing in the recesses with the material bunches, just to further push that look of really leathery, old, worn boots that this Candice Warrior has had on for quite a while. Now we're going to start adding Tuscore fur to the previous layering mix and we're going to very carefully start framing the front of the boots as well as defining more of the folds in the material for this layer stage. Very careful here, get your highlights nice and tight, nice and thin and you'll get a really nice natural look which will transition well from the old leathery worn look we've got for the base layers to the slightly more lighter look for the highlights. Now using Tuscor fur, apply a very fine edge highlight to just frame the boots a little bit more and just to find some more of the folds as well as the toes and the heel just to finish off the boots. Now we're going to use non-oil, thin down again with Lamia Medium to about a 50-50 split and we're going to very carefully just apply this as an all over wash all over the axe, the shaft of the axe as well as the pommel at the top of the banner pole and the banner pole itself. Once the wash is dry we're going to use pure iron breaker which is going to edge highlight and frame the axe head giving it a little bit of sharpness, a little bit of glint as the light bounces off of it as well as highlighting the axe shaft with a nice thin line all the way down the centre shaft. Picking out the dagger on the back of his belt and just applying a very neat edge highlight around the top of the pommel for the banner pole. Now we're going to use Balthazar Gold and we're going to very carefully now paint in all the gold details. This includes all the rivets all down the chest armour and the back of the headdress as well as all the gold interlacing which helps frame the helmet. Be very careful here, we do not want to undo any of the work we've done previously, but just nice and careful, nice and targeted, pick out all the rivets, all the gold, and get a nice clean coat for the following layering stages. Now we're going to use hash art copper and we're going to relayer over all these areas just to bring up the tone of that slightly warm beaten gold to a little bit more of a burnished look, which will really, really complement the look and vibrancy of the red really, really effectively. Just nice little dot highlights all over the rivets and just frame all the gold once again. Now we're going to apply a wash with Agrax Earth Shade, thin down about 50% with Lamia Medium and apply a targeted wash here just over, over all the gold just to give it a little bit more depth as it sits in amongst the rest of the warrior. Finally, we're going to use Canoptec Alloy and apply a very, very fine edge highlight to all the gold areas on the model. We're going to apply a very, very, very fine dot highlight to all the rivets, just that little glint of light hitting off the very apex of the curves of the rivets, as well as framing all the gold interlacing around the helmet, leaving the previous layers and the wash showing in the recesses as much as we can. Now we're going to use dry up bark and just very carefully pick out the chin strap that falls below his chin and frames the face. as well as the strap holding the banner pole in place. Now, using Gawthor Brown, we're going to very carefully apply a few dot highlights just to give that ropey look to the chin strap around the head on both sides, as well as just highlighting the top area of the strap holding the banner in place. Now 
on to what is possibly the most complex part of this model, the free hand for the banner. It's a completely optional stage, and if you're happy with how the warrior looks about this stage, then there's no need to worry about this. We started with a cross in the centre of the flag for the main body of the sun, where we want the sun to be centred. And then once we had our positioning, we drew in the rest of the frame of the sun, a nice round circle. As we got the shape of the circle sorted and in position, we carefully filled it in with Abaddon black, few thin layers just to give it a really nice solid coat. And then you want to start creating small triangles on the north, east, south and west side of the flag for the smaller prongs of the sun. And then in between these, create some larger, longer triangles to finish off the base for the Candish freehand sun. Now we're going to use Zandri dust and we're going to very, very carefully just fill in the main bulk of the colour for the Candish sun on the banner. Again, with a few thin down coats, get a really nice smooth layer to get this looking as good as you can. You want to leave a very small line of Abaddon black between each of the triangles and the main bulk of the sun. This will just help segment it out and give it that really drawn on look that we want to achieve. If at any point you do join these up with the main body of the sun, you can go around with a small line of Abaddon black just to separate them out again. Now, using Xandri Dust and Zemesi Desert, we're going over all this again, just to bring up the vibrancy, to best capture the look of the design we're trying to make. So very carefully, make sure you've got a nice tip to your brush for this to avoid any bleeding over, and take your time, we can't stress that enough. Now we're gonna add some Pallid Witch Flesh to the Xandri Dust Zemesi Desert mix, and we're gonna very, very carefully just apply an outline to all these geometric shapes on the flag. This will just help slightly lift the design off the flag a little bit and make it look a little bit more 3D as opposed to 2D as it was with the solid colours earlier on. Now we're going to add a little bit more Pallid Witch Flesh to the mix and we're just going to apply a little highlight just to the tips and edges of all the triangles and the top and bottom of the circle just to finish off our freehand effect. The base was dry brushed in three stages, starting with a thorough dry brush of drier bark over all the sand. We then went over again with a lighter dry brush of Gawthor Brown, following up with a final very light dry brush of Pallid Witch Flesh just to finish off our earthy look for the base. Once you're happy with how the model and the base look, you can decorate the base however you like. We opted for midland land tufts, dead leaves scattered around, and a little bit of clump foliage just to finish off the effect. Finally, affix your model to a paint pot using some blue tack and just very carefully, with nice solid lines, paint the rim of the base with dry bark. And there we have it, your Candish Warrior finished and ready for battle.